Welcome to Farmer Fridays, where I get to speak to West Virginia farmers, agriculturists, and ag organizations across the state. My name is Elizabeth Lynch, your 2020 Miss Berkeley County. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Fiona Harrison from the Charlestown Farmers Market. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. So to start off with, let's talk to, about your agricultural background. I don't really have an agricultural background. I uh, was born and raised in California and I always liked gardening and being outdoors and uh, critters and plants, but I was not raised or born in a farm family. Uh, my background actually is in natural resources and um, I worked all over for the park service and the forest service. And it wasn't until um, about 2009 that I started my own small farm here just outside uh, Charlestown and tried growing things for a living. I had been in the wine industry for years in Loudoun County, Virginia, and decided that I wanted to branch out and start my own, uh, my own small vegetable farm. So I, I don't have um, a background in it. I started as a vendor at the Charlestown Farmers Market, and then I morphed into a vendor and the market manager, and then I stopped vending, and now I'm uh, strictly managing the market. So that's not very exciting at all, but. Actually, it, it really it. is. It's exciting to meet another first-generation farmer. You know, my family wasn't into the agricultural world at all, and eventually I got into horses and then swine, and now here I am. So it's, it's really exciting to meet another first-generation farmer. Talk to me about the Charlestown Farmer's Market. Give me as much background information as you can. Well, the Charlestown Farmer's Market started before my time. Um, we, there was a group of volunteers that took it over at the end of the 2011, start of the 2012 season. Uh, we made some changes to the market. We started recruiting more vendors. We changed the location, changed the times. We changed a lot, changed our logo. So right now, uh, since 2012, we have been on South Samuel Street in downtown Charlestown. This year, 2021, we run from 9 a.m. to noon. Uh, and if you don't know where South Samuel Street is, we are across the street from the Charlestown Library and we are adjacent to the Bank of Charlestown employee parking lot. Um, it's not our biggest year as far as numbers of vendors are concerned. Uh, this year we have about 24 vendors on the books, but they're not all there at the same time because, uh, for instance, the orchards are still coming on. So we still have orchards joining us. We have vendors that pop in and out based on other shows and other events that they're doing. But average on a weekly basis, we have about 15 to 18 vendors. And our focus is a farmer's market. We want it to be about local fresh fruits and vegetables and plants. But we also have other vendors. We've got soaps and personal care products. We have meats, we have eggs. We have vendors like um, sell honey, maple syrups, and jams and jellies. We have breads and baked goods and pies. We have, we have a lot of different, um, different vendors that come and sell their wares. We also accept non-food vendors, uh, artisan vendors, if you will. We didn't have very many that applied this year, but we've had pottery. We've had um, dyed wool from their, their sheep that they raise. We've had jewelry. So we strive to be a farmer's market, but we also accept other vendors as well. So it's, it's, um, it's a vibrant market in a good year prior, prior to COVID. It's a, it, it was a thriving, very busy, very active community-based market. We're rebuilding a little bit after COVID, however. Talk to me a little bit about how you're helping your community using the SNAP program. Oh, our SNAP program is very popular. SNAP is, stands for Supplement and Nutrition Assistance Program, uh, formerly known as Food Stamps. And we've been accepting SNAP at our market for a number of years, I would say since 2013 or so. Uh, in 2015, we started our own matching program, which means that anybody who comes to our information tent and swipes their card, they get a one-for-one -one match 
that's good only for fruits and vegetables. So if they were to swipe their card for $10, they would walk away with $20 worth of currency to spend within the market. Um, going along with that, a couple of years ago, we got another pot of money through the West Virginia Food and Farm Coalition that now allows us to triple or even quadruple folks um, who are on SNAP. We allow, it allows us to quadruple their money so if they have children present and they come to the market, and again, using that $10 uh, amount to keep the math even, if they swipe for $10 and we took $10 off of their EBT card, they would walk away with $40 to spend within our market, which is money that's going back into our locals, local farmers and, and producers and food makers. And it allows SNAP customers to really stretch their food budget. It really allows them to buy in bulk and can, preserve, freeze, dehydrate, make batches of food to feed their families, um, feed, their, feed their neighbors, and preserve some for winter. So it's very popular in the fall when apples and peaches are in season for folks to come and get bushels of tomatoes or apples or, or peaches and preserve those fruits and be able to use them in the winter when they might be buying canned otherwise. So it's a, it's a really great program, both for the recipients and for the farmers, because it puts thousands of dollars back into our local farm economy every single year. And sometimes even in a week or, uh, you know, in, in a, a week or two, we have hundreds and hundreds of dollars going back into the, the farmer's pockets because of that. So it's a great program and we'd really love as many people as possible to use that. It's so exciting to see that you guys are utilizing such an amazing program. So kudos to you guys. Great job. Now, my next question for you would be, what do you feel like is the most challenging part about working in agriculture? Uh, I would say both when I was a farmer and as currently a market manager, um, my number one answer would be the weather. It is impossible to control, somewhat okay to predict, but you never know what mother nature is going to throw your way. So as a, as a farmer and as a vendor, if you get a really couple of rainy, couple of really rainy days in a row and you're flooded, then that will change your entire work plan for the week. Likewise, if you have weeks and weeks of drought, that changes what you can harvest, how things grow, how fast they grow. Do they grow at all? They might die. How often you have to water. Um, the wind drops a big limb on your fence and then you have to spend days fixing your fence so the deer don't get in and the groundhogs and the bunnies. And so then that's time away from other tasks that maybe one week you'd plan to accomplish during that week and now you're stuck fixing a tractor or a hole in a fence or a hole in your drip line or any number of things. So it's, it's really uh, frustrating to not be able to control that and to get on it, at least it was for me. And the same with the market, you know, if it rains on a Saturday, there are fewer customers at the market. Some people don't like to come out in the rain. And so therefore the farmers are stuck at the market with product that they're not gonna be able to sell that day. So I would say from my perspective, both as a market manager and as a vendor, the, the weather was the number one most challenging, most frustrating, most like hair pulling um, thing about it. Yeah. You, if you talk to any farmer, you know, that's something that they always talk about is how demanding mother nature is. I know in my last interview with Misty Cook from Spring Valley Farms, she said the exact same thing. Now, you struggle with all of these challenges, but on the flip side of all of that, what do you think is the most exciting part about working in agriculture? What is the best or more, most rewarding part? Um, I would say for me, again, both as a ven former vendor and a market manager, it's probably the customers. It is uh, seeing them share their food and these fresh items with their kids, getting their kids to try certain things and seeing now I'm in, we're in our 10th year. I'm in my 10th year of managing the market as a volunteer, I might add. And I've seen families um, grow up, you know, these little kids that were like one and two years old are now 10 years old and they're still coming. And it's so 
it's so rewarding. It's so amazing. It's so great to see familiar faces in, in the market. And as a vendor, it was great to see those customers coming back week after week to buy my lettuce, buy my garlic, buy my carrots. Um, that's definitely one of the most re rewarding parts of, of working in agriculture. In addition to just the hard work. I mean, it was good to just get out there and work hard and sweat and be able to come in at the end of the day. And that shower felt so good and your body was just tired. And, and there's a certain sense of fulfillment and joy and um, pleasure in that as well. Uh, so those are the two things that I would say were probably the best for me in working in agriculture. The customers, and I got to eat good food too. I still get to eat good food, whether I grew it or not, I still eat really well. Well, excellent. So now COVID-19 has affected the agricultural industry in so many ways. How has it affected the Charlestown farmers market? And I know you mentioned previously how COVID-19 has affected customers coming in. Is that, you know, how it's affected the farmers market itself? It has affected the farmer's market uh, in the beginning because we didn't really know what the virus was doing or we didn't know much about it. We kept our rules very strict and very tight and we went locked down full on. Uh, we started last year with a, just a drive through. Mar First of all, we started three weeks late. So we normally start in April. We pushed that to May last year to learn a little bit more. Uh, we started then when we did open as a drive through market, we tried that for nine weeks where customers had to pre-order and prepay from every single vendor. We don't have an online sales platform, so it was the burden of the, of the purchases fell to the customer to contact each farmer individually. That was very hard for everybody. It took a lot of time for everybody. Um, and then when, once we opened to customers last year as a walkthrough market, we roped off the sidewalks. It was one entrance, one exit. It was masks required, no dogs, no music, no events, no sampling, no cooking demos, nothing. It was, we didn't give anybody a chance to hang out of the market. We wanted them in and we wanted them out. So more people could flow through the market. It was marginally successful at best and that really drove sales way, way down. It's no different than any other small business that you would talk to around the country or world. We suffered the same things. So it did affect our vendors. Uh, some dropped out of the market entirely last year. They said, we, you know, this is too much for me. It's, we don't, we don't know enough. We're going to drop out, which was fine. They were refunded their money. Um, some vendors came up with their own safety protocols for their stand. So once we did reopen to customers, I let the vendors do, you know, if they didn't want people coming into the stand, that was fine. If they wanted to put up Plexi, that was fine. Um, but overall, it affected them in a big way. They, they all went into 2020 thinking they were going to make so much money and budgeted accordingly, and they didn't. And it was, it was really hard because nobody... Nobody knew what to expect. Nobody know, knew where it was going. Nobody knew what vaccinations were going to do. Nobody knew what the administration at the time was going to do. It was just all very, very, very stressful. Um, and we are slowly trying to rebuild that because I think we lost customers because of it. Some customers stayed away because they didn't feel safe. Perfectly fine. Some customers stayed away. They didn't like our mask mandates. They didn't like our safety protocols. They thought we had too many rules. They stayed away. They'll probably never be back. That's fine too. But I think we're going to have to um, really work to, to rebuild our customer base again because our head counts are nowhere near where they were. So it's been it's been tough. Yeah, at yeah. the end of the day, you have to do what you can to keep your customers safe, keep yourself safe, and your all of your vendors as well. So you guys had yes. to do a lot of things to overcome all of these challenges, and it sounds like you did a really great job. Now, what can your community do to help the Charlestown Farmers Market? after facing all of these challenges and obstacles? The number one thing they can do is shop with us or shop at a local farmer's market, shop local, support a small business. Obviously we don't have everything. We're not going to be your place to come and buy toilet paper and, and toothpaste. But if you have a chance to choose between a big box store and a local farmer for your fresh tomatoes and peaches and green beans and corn. If you can, try to get into the habit of shopping at your local farmer's market whenever or wherever that is. 
um, because you're you're supporting a, a, a family, you're supporting a, a local a, a face, you know, you get to know your farmers, you can ask them about recipes. They, uh, there, there's a lot to be said for that relationship that's formed and those conversations you have about pets and dogs and deaths in the family and marriages and all of these things is come into play when you sit down to eat a local meal and you know where it came from and you know who's, who, does, who, who sold it to you. Um, again, that's not to say that you can't go or shouldn't go anywhere else. Nobody's saying that, but shopping local um, you know, can, can really mean a lot to, to those folks who are, who are setting up week after week, multiple times a week in a lot of cases to try to sell, um, try to sell their products. So that, that's what I would say, what they can do right now and in the, in, in the future is try to shop local as much as possible. And I know it's hard to get into the habit of doing it. And I know it's hard to work around kids' soccer and music and, and all of those activities, you know, everybody's busy, but if, it can, if it's on your way to somewhere or you can make it on your way to somewhere to another errand and you swing in and pick up what you need, it can really go a long way. You're 20, 20 bucks, 200 bucks. Um, it, it really helps and means a lot to those uh, growers and producers. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. I know that the farmer's market, if this is something that you have previously mentioned, uh, the farmer's market has just not only agricultural vendors, but music and arts and sports teams. Why is this farmer's market not only important to the agricultural community, but the Eastern Panhandle as a whole, especially when it comes to the social aspect of things? Well, I can't speak for why it's, why it's important to other people. I can speak to what we are doing to kind of foster community in the Eastern Panhandle. I mean, when, when th this group of volunteers uh, first took it over, we, we wanted to help build a, um, a community, a downtown, a place where people are proud to shop and they, and they feel comfortable shopping. Um, we want to support downtown businesses and local nonprofits. We offer one free space a week to downtown, uh, downtown businesses and nonprofits. So they can come and they can tell people about their organization. They can help people register to vote. They can tell folks about the, um, the Vietnam veterans um, organizations and, and Briggs Animal Adoption Center brings dogs for adoption and animal welfare. All these things, we, we, we want to help them, you know, get the word out as well. And we want to feel like a safe space for folks to come and be able to do that. Potomac Valley Audubon Society has been with us a number of years. Um, Eastern Pan the caregivers, hospice, the Charlestown Library. We want to feel like we are helping them succeed as well and just building everybody up and lifting everybody up. And... Um, you know, we, we want to support downtown musicians and, and artists and things like that. So, so I, you know, again, I don't want to speak for everybody, like, why is our market important to the Eastern Panhandle? But that's what we're trying to do in the Eastern Panhandle. And we want to send people to Berkeley Springs Farmers Market. We want to send folks to the Shepherdstown Farmers Market. So we're, we're looking to really be cooperative, collaborative, uplifting, um, sensitive, caring, you know, uh, safe marketplace for everybody. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's amazing. And it's so good to hear that there are organizations out there like yours. Now, what's one thing that you would want people to know about West Virginia agriculture? Um, it's definitely thriving. Um, Family farming is huge in West Virginia. Family farm, fam, family owned farms, I think account for a majority of the farms in the state, if I'm not mistaken, if that has not changed. So, okay, you're nodding your head, yes. That's, that's correct. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, we are, you know, super big on commodity crops, corn and soybeans. I know though they are, they are thriving here. You know, folks often wonder like, gosh, West Virginia has so many mountains and hills. How can you grow anything there? But you know, the state is really strong in, in broiler chickens and turkeys uh, around Charlestown. The horse industry 
you know, that's agricultural. You're not growing anything. Well, I guess you are you're growing horses and you're growing feed for the horses and you have straw for the horse stalls and things like that. That's huge in Charlestown, huge part of our economy. So it's, um, it's important to the state along with agritourism. You know, all of the, those things that people like to do, feed the calves and pet the horses and feed the chickens, you know, that's big in our state too. And if it weren't for agriculture and agritourism, um, it, it wouldn't be, we, we wouldn't be the state we are, that's for sure. It's super important. I 100% yeah. agree with you. Now, <laughs> to our, our viewers watching, I want to give them a take home message about you know, the importance of buying locally. So tell me why, why should people buy local? Well, going back to a little bit about what I said earlier, you know, you're, you're, su you're supporting a, a person, not a corporation. You're supporting a, a family uh, for fresh fruits and veg vegetables. They haven't traveled very far to get to you. They're fresher. Uh, oftentimes they're better quality. Sometimes they're organic. Sometimes they're raised sustainably with no pesticides or herbicides. And that's a good thing in my book. Um, you know, it, it's, it, in my mind, it just makes sense. Again, you, you're not going to be able to get everything at our farmer's market. And, and you can't get everything from April through October. You, you're not going to find peaches at our market in April. You're not going to find really good greens in the height of summer. You know, it's about eating seasonally. Um, knowing what's local, knowing what's in season in your area and adjusting your menus for that. Uh, and as well, when you buy local, that money stays local. It doesn't, it might eventually work its way out into, into a bigger, you know, kind of network of, of banks and corporations and stuff. But oftentimes the local farmer that you buy your eggs and your meat and your veggies from is shopping at the local feed store like Gowers and that's where they're buying their chicken food. And that's where they're buying their straw for their, uh, for mulching their beds and stuff. And that will stay in the hands of Gowers and then Gowers might spend that, you know, to get what they need. So it is kind of a, a trickle, trickle down effect. Um, there's no reason to do it all at once. Nobody can go local all at once, all at one time. But if you just start with little bits, just buying, just buying your beef local or buying your eggs local or buying your chicken local, you know, just little steps like that can really help the, the local food movement. And again, again, getting back to supporting, supporting families and those conversations that you have with the farmers. I, I just think it's all, it's all worth it. Yeah. Thank you so much. And it has been a complete honor to interview you today. I cannot thank you enough for agreeing to do this interview with me. Oh, well, thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Yes, ma'am. Well, that has been our Farmer Fridays for today. Follow the Charlestown Farmers Market on Facebook to get more updates and follow their journey. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Elizabeth Lynch, your 2020 Miss Berkeley County.